All right. So we have a great super chat here from this lady is for liberty. She writes, HR 6666 is waking up the constitutional cops. Find out who your public health officer is and will they medically kidnap? And if you don't have a constitutional share of move before October, hashtag depose the tyrants. Masks are totally useless. And thank you so much for your contribution of $20 there. This lady is for liberty jumping in, interrupting the show with some very important points and some subjects that I actually want to make sure I underscore in my message that I haven't covered enough. And you gave me an idea for something as a means of advice here that I hadn't even considered. This is so good and so in line with what we're going to be covering on the show today with the rest of the news we have coming up, because we are going to be talking about the threat of forced vaccinations, where we have people actually saying that, yes, the government has the right to push vaccinations on you. This is from WND.com. CJ, if you could pull this up, Alan Dershowitz, state has the right to plunge a needle into your arm. Whoa. Harvard Law School emeritus professor Alan Dershowitz claimed in an interview that the government has a constitutional right under the 10th Amendment to force, forcibly vaccinate a citizen to curb the spread of a contagious disease. Quote, let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread the disease, even if you disagree. You have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Uh, what the fuck? The interviewer, Jason Goodman, interjected, asking if the famed constitutional scholar was saying that if the government decides you have to be vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated. Absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. This is absolute insanity. Now, hypothetically, we can go to the hypothetical just to discount all of this nonsense. Hypothetically, if there is a disease that you are a carrier for that is so deadly that the rest of the world says, you can't come out of your own property. You have to be cornered. We're not gonna let you on any shared property, communal property, public property, anybody else's private property, you are banned because your virus is so bad. Until you can prove you're not, yeah, okay, fine. You can say, you can't come into my space, you can't come into my public property, or mine, you can't come into my private property unless you get a vaccination first. That's one thing. I can't go onto your land and go into your body and say, you have to take this vaccination. This is absolute bullshit. And this extends into the public sphere as well. I have the right to come out and be a part of the human Petri dish and interact with other human beings as long as they choose to. And I can go out and go off my property. And I, if, you, if they demand that I wear a bubble boy suit to protect them from me, then you don't have a right as the government to stop me from taking a precaution that lowers this risk to zero. It is a risk that I and other Americans should be able to set for ourselves. I don't know what's wrong with Mr. Dershowitz. This is not a constitutional scholar. This is someone who is a perverter of the constitutional intent in the Bill of Rights supposed to protect you from these things. And of course, we know that this was an excuse to create the central authority that is the Constitution. A constitutional scholar could be told, when they're saying, I'm not a scholar of constitutions, I'm a scholar of this Constitution, which is unconstitutional. And just so you know, I'm a constitutionalist in the truest sense of the word, where vol voluntary governments come together, they should have charters, they should have documents, they should have a Constitution that lays out the clear authority as a social contract that people can voluntarily become a part of or opt out of if they choose to. Under that idea, the current constitution that we're experiencing today is unconstitutional. It authorizes the tyranny that we experienced and was illegal under the legitimate constitution that we should be under as the law of the land, the Articles of Confederation. It was created so that it could explicitly create new systems of taxation, a standing army, intellectual property, endorse slavery, and create a new central bank. And as we have today, creating the excuse for this asshole Alan Dershowitz to say, oh, yes, it's okay for government to do this because the, the words on paper say it's okay. The Constitution says it's okay for us to violate your individual rights to put a needle in your body. Fuck that. Fuck this. This is absolutely sickening. And then we, we, we're going to talk as well, and this is, this is the flip side, the positive of this, from the organicprepper.com, leaving the city. Here's what to look for in a new community. And we've brought you a lot of stories over the last couple months of sheriffs and local law enforcement even just saying, nope, screw it, we're not adhering to this. 
we brought you my personal story even of getting pulled over now how many how many times yeah. two three times twice. Twice. twice twice well no three times total since coronaphobia remember well you weren't there no no on our tour oh, we got yeah. pulled over um actually we pulled ourselves over because we thought we had a bad light and a cop came and and and, and you know like it wasn't technically but yeah so yeah. and and no social distancing cops the cops know better they don't care you know um but there are so many in defiance this is a powerful time to vote with your feet and i really want to thank this lady is for liberty not just for the 20 dollars super chat here but for this point in it and saying yes it is time to vote with your feet if you are going to live somewhere where forced vaccinations are a threat get the fuck out as soon as you can i, I will take issue move before october no move as soon as possible this is happening now okay lady no really this is like why why wait now yeah I, I like that you put in a specific timeline here yeah move before october that's that's it's a fair to be fair that's a that's a reasonable goal if you're if you're somewhere where you're in a city or a place where county law enforcement is tyrannical and might be forcing vaccinations might be forcing stay-at-home orders and you know in, in 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 a whole other way than than what's in accordance with the constitution or even the statewide emergency declarations no like yeah get out now i mean as soon as you like it's not an emergency because they're not they're not going to announce this tomorrow right so to be fair to say you know do it do it as as, as the supreme court would say with all deliberate speed it was that, that you know that's that's their legal wiggle room term uh deliberate deliberate speed so if, if you can you know vote with your feet right now to protect you and your family this is this is the time to do it and i i highly recommend people looking into uh what we have here in juniper wood with a uh, you know rural homesteading community that that really does live by these values i mean i have the best neighbors in the world because when when zoning people come out here they they frequently get their tires shot out you know like I, they, they, you think they're going to be able jim you haven't been here do you think they're going to get away with you've been here that long you think they're going to get away with forced vaccinations at juniper wood ranch good luck good luck <laughs> good fucking luck this this area this land this community we would we would set up booby traps on the roads i don't think it would come before we it's not like, no it wouldn't that's the point know, right? that's the point but because we would right because we would they will not right. and we have proven it out here there have been enough actual shooting at law enforcement incidents out here they're not is they're not going to charge let, let the hillbillies here get coronavirus murderer. yeah yeah so medically kidnap will they medically kidnap this is actually something that's already a threat and again we, be, we, we come to this heightened awareness of government in the coronaphobia crisis in a good way, where people are going, oh, government's being dumb, let's work around it. Oh, and then it ends, and no, oh, government's still being dumb, well, now we still can work around it. Medical kidnapping is a real thing. CPS, DCF, all these alphabet soup agencies that we are fooled into thinking as victims of family law are operated exclusively at the state level. They are funded with federal grants, incentives for child kidnapping, they call them subsidies for the foster care system, they're created under the federal law rubric that gives states the power to do this, that protects their law enforcement agents from, from, from when they violate your constitutional rights. So, you know, uh, medical kidnapping, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a real threat now blowing up on a bigger scale. I'm not so worried about the medical kidnapping because it, that's, that's a small subset of the child endangerment kidnapping, which is if, if your neighbors call the cops on you because they saw you smoking pot in your backyard, you know, now that's a child well, welfare check is drugs are in the house with the kids. Oh, well, got it, got it. It's not, never mind that alcohol is a way worse threat than whatever. You know, oh, well, we, and, and then they have as an excuse to violate your privacy. Not a thing out here. Not a thing out here in Juniper Wood where rural land ownership and, and no trespassing signs is the norm and trespassers shot on site. Like, no, cops don't do that. They don't pull that shit out of here move somewhere where you don't have to worry about cops pulling that shit this lady is for liberty brilliant so masks are totally useless uh there is there is some minor i i use to to the masks but no yeah I, this is something that really does deserve examination i i haven't really got into this because masks are a good way to broadcast to people that you you're acknowledging the viral risk 
Um, I the last few times I've gone out, I haven't worn my mask or my, my my bandana, but I've had it in my pocket in case I needed to show people that. And if someone said, "Hey, Adam, come, you know, you can come into my business, but only if you're wearing a mask, or come sit down and talk to me, but only if you're wearing," I'd be like, "Yeah, sure, I'll put you at ease." And it, it's a small deterrent. And we know it has some effect. To what effect it has in the in the larger, you know, public health? You know, are you not going to get if if you're not sick? There's no point in wearing a mask. The point is, if you're wearing a mask, you're you're not transmitting with with your your particle uh, projections, yeah. your toilet plumes coming out of your face uh, that that might infect other people. And the wearing of a mask for everybody is this ridiculous overabundance of caution. Well, you might be an asymptomatic carrier, so you better wear a mask in case you sneeze on something. You know, it doesn't the, the droplets don't land in my eyeballs. You know, and if, if, you, if you want to go to that, you know, it is, are they totally useless? No, but the way they're being applied and, and mandated, yeah, pretty laughably ridiculous. So take advantage of the opportunity and the heightened awareness, especially now in coronaphobia season, to vote with your feet.